Welcome back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog and another podcast. Today we're in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 34, which reads, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. That's Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 34. In our text today, the Lord Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room, and it was Thursday evening. They were gathered there to eat the Passover meal and to experience the very first Lord's Supper. There was to be no Passover after that until the coming of the Millennial Kingdom, the 1,000-year reign of Christ on earth after the Tribulation. In verses 31 and 32, we read, Simon, Simon. Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Only hours after being told that he would be a ruler in Christ's kingdom, Peter is told that he would go from the heights of joyful anticipation and confidence to the pits of failure and bitter weeping in one night. The Greek word used here for asked in verse 31 means demanded. It is a compound word communicating in the strongest way, Satan demanding to sift sift Peter, who is the obvious leader, of the group of disciples. And so it is not surprising that Satan would want to go after Peter. And Peter had no idea that his leadership skills were about to increase through the intensity of yet another trial. God permits Satan to sift us so that through the stretching of our faith, our intimacy with God is refined. When we go through the deep waters, we are forced to more strongly wrestle with the right questions, which lead us to rely more ardently upon God. When we get to these places, we are granted a clearer vision of who the Lord Jesus really is, and we find ourselves being drawn closer in intimacy to Him. Sifting wheat is a way to discern whether the wheat is real or not. Satan strongly demanded to violently shake not only Peter but all of the disciples to reveal in his mind their inauthenticity. But God had other ideas. Through the intense shaking to come, the disciples learned who was their who was the secret behind their authenticity. In fact, the shaking will provide the fulfillment of Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 7, which reads, I will strike down the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. According to verse 32 of our text, we learn the Lord Jesus intercedes for his disciple, who is weak and failure prone. Peter was full of self. Thus, he was full of self-doubt, which produced in him a lack of spiritual confidence and power. This was true for all of the disciples, but especially Peter. This was the perfect time for the enemy to go after all of them. But the Lord Jesus intercedes. Satan relentlessly appeals to God to turn against us. 
Yeah, I said that right. Satan relentlessly appeals to God to turn against us. He's trying to get God to turn against us. And if he did, we would fail completely. But Satan's theology is lacking. He doesn't get the fact that when we have been justified through faith and the Lord Jesus, nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. God will never abandon his own. In verse 33, we read, But he replied, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Confident Peter was convinced that he could do anything for the Lord Jesus. In fact, this is what led him to grab his sword in the garden and proceed to cut off the ear of Malchus. In verse 34 of our text, we read, Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. And here is the only time in the Gospels the Lord Jesus calls Simon Peter. This trial of Peter and his recovery was yet another way that God would demonstrate the power of his saving faith. Not ours, his. Our faith in the Lord Jesus is a gift. It's a product of his faithfulness. It is interesting that this word of warning followed the dispute over who would be the greatest among the disciples. Imagine how the disciples must have, must have felt when they heard that not only would one of their number betray him, but that their spokesman and leader would publicly deny him. If a strong man like Peter was going to fail the Lord, what hope was there for the rest of them? One of the reoccurring themes in First Peter is, as we endure trials, we are placed in the position to become a source of strength for others. Peter's courage failed, but not his faith. In fact, he was more intimately restored to fellowship with Christ and was more profoundly used to strengthen God's people as a result of this trial. This is the way the Lord works. The Lord allows us to go through those moments of the tearing away of our faith, and we think it will completely pop, but it doesn't. No, it's torn away in order to be strengthened, like a, like a muscle on a bodybuilder who literally, when he lifts weights, he tears away at the muscles, only to discover that bulk comes as the healing takes place in said muscles. Thirty years later, Peter wrote this. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith. The Lord Jesus pictures Satan trying to tear us apart from our faith in the God of the Bible. Peter pictures Satan as a lion who can devour anything but faith. He can't devour our faith. Our faith is a... Is a is a sign. It's a sign of the presence of God in our lives. And he has said, I will never leave nor forsake you. You know, for a long time I did not understand that I could do anything as a believer and remain a believer. Now, should I do anything? Should I act on my sinful impulses? No. It's dumb for me to do that, but I could, and by the way, I do. I just don't want you to know about it. And my faith never dies. Why? Because it's a product of him, the Lord Jesus himself. In this context of our text today, 
God broke Peter's pride and his self-reliance. He broke it that night in the agony of Satan's sieve. And he used the tortures of Satan <coughs> to strengthen Peter's faith. Even though Peter would shortly deny the Lord Jesus, all of this was used of the Lord to make Peter the leader he became. There's not a whole lot that Napoleon said that I like, but there is one quote that come, came from him that I absolutely love. Napoleon, that short guy, that's part of the reason why I like him so much, so short. But he once said these words, a leader is a dealer in hope, and you can't deal out hope unless you have it yourself. And you can't arrive upon hope unless you test, unless you test the faithfulness of God. My friends, I trust this podcast and this blog are useful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.